Okay, so I've got <clears throat> the folder of the work from yesterday, and I've got an index file, and that's what I've started to create so far. Uh, let's uh, open that up in Notepad. You can right-click Edit Notepad. This is our project so far. It's about 38 lines in my case. And if I run it in the browser, just to remind myself, we've got this um, interface that we're starting to create. And with jQuery Mobile, we have the ability to create these effects quickly, uh, headers and footers, all that good stuff. So what I want to continue with the header is to make a nice navigation menu. Right now we've got a button that says go to page 2. And it goes to page 2 and it's alright, but I'd rather have some sort of real navigation menu with at the top, you know, a nav bar with buttons and all of that. So we'll see that we can take plain HTML and then with a little bit of the jQuery mobile, upgrade it to something uh, better. So let's back up to our first section, header area, data role header, H1. So on my line 17, that's the text that appears uh, at the top of the browser. Uh, next line, 18, I want to create a, uh, a nav bar here. So we have the nav element, the nav tag, and it will have a data role nav bar. Creates a horizontal navigation area or element. So the nav tag that we've used before, <coughs> uh, we had that uh, for the resume at least. I think we also had it for the project two, a collection of links. Like the project two, this will be a collection of links that are bullet points. So that means we need an UL element, unordered list, list item, home. So there's going to be a button called home. Every list item is a button. Next line, another list item, let's say about. Go ahead and run it in the browser. So here, we're creating an element of a nav bar made out of bullet points. First, first bullet point, second bullet point. In the browser, it creates a new area. It automatically divided right down the middle because I've got two elements, one and two. I can add more elements and it'll automatically divide itself. Let's say another one. List item contact. This is dividing itself now into three columns. It's not complete yet. A nav bar, you know, this nav bar doesn't do anything yet. What What is it missing, do you think? It's missing links, exactly. Uh, it's setting itself up to work simply visually, but it doesn't work yet because there's no links. You can't click on these to go anywhere. So back to the code. This home 
we'll link to the page one and about page two and contact page three. So we're going to need a tags. an a tag to create a um, a link a href now we kept the some very basic names of page 1 and page 2 for the ids uh, that's not a good idea that's not a good way to do it when you're looking at your code in one part of the document and it's something's called page 2 that doesn't have any meaning. I can't tell what it is unless I memorize what each one of my sections is named as a div. So it would make more sense to name these things with the name of the section. So I don't have an ID of home at the moment. What do I need to fix? Page 1, line 11. So ID equals page 1 Again, that doesn't have any value. But an ID of home, now it has a value. It has more of a meaning. And it should match up with my href. Now keep that lowercase. Taking a quick look at a few of the homeworks turned in, I see there's a couple of problems here and there regarding capitalization. For example, having a capital I for an images folder is different than a lowercase i and it might cause the links to break so here if I'm referencing capital home but I call this lowercase home it might not work one browser might show it properly and another browser might not so to be safe keep it all lowercase I need an a tag then for about we can probably figure out that that will have an href pound about. I don't have an about screen. My about screen at the moment is called page 2, line 39 or so. So pound about, id equals about. No pound sign when it's the attribute ID is basically the pound sign. There's no pound sign there. But yes, pound sign on the link. I see people make that mistake. They name that about with no pound sign, but then they name this with, then they reference this with no pound sign. That won't work. It needs a pound sign in the link, but not in the ID. So um, the next line uh, of contact, that one doesn't exist yet, but that's OK. A tag pound contact. I don't have a section with an ID of contact yet. We'll create it later. So now if we look at it in the web browser, the nav bar is starting to take shape. Now I see it's divided into the right columns. The element is centered. I hover over them, and I get a little hover effect. If I click About, It'll go to the About screen. And if I go back, it goes back. Obviously, on the Home screen, I'm already on Home, so nothing really happens there. If I click on About, it should go to About. And if I click on Contact, either it'll say Error or nothing will happen because there's no Contact page yet. That's the document so far. Anyone need some help?
Okay, so when we created a nav bar for project two, it took a lot of work. And here, a lot less work. There is the ability for customization, of course, that we'll get to. But very quickly, we were able to create this. Now what we can also do is um, add more of these um, jQuery mobile attributes. For example, add like an icon. Add like icons for each of these buttons. Part of the trick is figuring out where we add these data roles. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it might not. Uh, for example, we had the original button, uh, data roll button, data transition slide, etc. Well, that was because we started with a plain old A tag. We had to then upgrade it to a button. This knows that when you have an A tag inside of a list item, inside of a UL, inside of a nav, you don't have to specify then data roll button. But when we have a plain old link, we have to specify data roll button. Looking at the old button, we should be able to figure out how to add the data icon and an animation if we want. We didn't specify one, so the animation, if you notice, is a fade. <coughs> so we're going to go back a href attribute space uh, data icon. We have a home icon that works pretty well for the home button data icon info is an icon that can be used to display about information and then there's data icon I, I always forget this one it's either mail or email if it doesn't work it'll just be blank but it's either mail or email and there's an icon that will display a little envelope yeah so it is mail And now we've got um, the buttons with a nice icon. The icon is at the top. <coughs> if you want, you can change the position of the icon. Data dash uh, icon POS. It doesn't sound what it doesn't sound what you think. It doesn't think what you stand for. It doesn't sound what you think. <laughs> it's position data icon position uh, bottom so position this at the bottom of the icon uh, data icon or is it something else it looks like I've got uh, it looks like I've got them all memorized but sometimes I forget so maybe it's not P data, dash. <coughs> data dash probably let's see well, we can look it up in a moment. We haven't gone to the official <coughs> jQuery website yet, <coughs> where it'll tell all your all your code. So maybe we won't do it just yet. I have to look it up. Let me just confirm here. Sometimes you need to put it on all of them. No. OK, so it's not quite that. That's OK. We'll look it up a little bit later. But there is a way. is a way to position that at the bottom. So we'll do it a little later. Okay, so we've got that nav bar, uh, footer, just to kind of keep it generic. Let's back up to where we've got line 17 intro to jQuery mobile. Let's just call that uh, header. We'll see why in a moment. And even though this makes sense, home, about, contact, I want to make those generic also. Let's call it page one, page two, page three. We're doing this because our page two contact still looks super plain if you go to page 2 it looks very plain I said last time that you have to 
add your data roles and all of that to every page you create. We're setting ourselves up to create a template for screens with a header, footer, content area, nav bar, and a few more things. And then we can use that template to create the future pages. So because you have to specify this, and let's say we made the template and we copied it seven times, and then later I get the idea, oh, actually, I don't want that fade animation anymore. I wanted a different one. We should also set up our data transition here. I don't think I've mentioned this one before yet, flow. If you add flow, I think it's one of the most interesting ones. We have fade, flip, slide, flow. I think it's one of the most extravagant ones. If you run it in the browser, you'll see this cool animation about your screen moving from, uh, from one to the other with a flow animation. that looks like this you go to page two it's like the whole screen gets flicked out of the way you go back it comes back in so very lots of animation Let's back up to where section starts. We're going to change that ID again to something more generic for our template. This is going to be a starting template that we will reuse. So I'll call it template. And yes, I'm going to break my rule about lower cases. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm setting this up as a template to reuse for 20 pages, three pages, whatever. And I want to make sure that I name it something that I hopefully because it's capital I'll see it and it'll remind myself to change it once I copy and paste the template into multiple screens that definitely needs to change every section needs its own unique ID one more thing yes is this jQuery uh, library free to use? it is jQuery mobile and jQuery are both free frameworks completely free to use for any project for personal or commercial purposes. So uh, here in the article we had a button. Well, that button was nice. It, it taught us one of the first things about jQuery mobile, but we don't, we don't quite need it the same anymore. Um, we'll do one more thing to it and then we'll, uh, we'll actually not delete it, we'll deactivate it. Let's add one more attribute to the Go to page two, data dash inline equals true. So save it and run it to see how that how that changes. We saw the button behaving a certain way a moment ago, and now we're making it behave another way. Data uh, data inline true, which means that the default was false. If we had to specify true, there had to be a default which was false. And so with data true, uh, inline means it only takes up enough of the line uh, of what the button says. It uh, doesn't go all the way to the edge. It's just as big as the button is necessary. Let's back up before article, or right after article starts, and then we'll add an H2. We'll say here, uh, main heading. You should reserve H1 for headers. You should reserve H4 for footers. Then you can use H2 and 3 in your main content area. H3, 
subheading we haven't done these but of course we've got the p tag some text here we can use what we learned regarding Google fonts to change the fonts right now we get like this generic Arial font use still what we know about CSS to change sizes and colors and we'll, we'll get to that we'll we'll change our colors definitely and work with other things But what I wanted to do was sort of downgrade our first page to a template which we can reuse in multiple screens. This is enough of a generic elements that I can reuse them to make more elements. So um, using this template, we're going to copy and paste it a few times to make a real page 1, 2, and 3. We're going to rearrange a bunch of things here. For example, this section that was about, let's just delete it completely. You get the idea, I hope, that you know we would have to add a header, article, and footer to complete this. Why not just delete it and start with that template? So that we're quickly already consistent in the design. So let's copy everything that was section. And actually, let's paste it before itself. I want to leave. I want to leave this template as the last one. So, just to find it, doesn't matter the order at all, really. We've broken the order of of the design where previously the code from top to bottom we would see it in the site, but now with jQuery Mobile and sections, we are able to create a a, a flow from line 20 to 70 back to two. It doesn't matter because they're separated with sections. So I want to leave section template as the last one. You know, at the very end, you've got your scripts and all of that. I want to leave my template at the very end so I can always find it. And above that, copy the whole section block and paste it. Let me zoom out here. So it's not readable, but let me zoom out so you can see it like that. At the very end, um, I've got the um, template, all of that. And right here. So at the very end, I've got the original template, which I can reuse over and over if I need a section with a nav bar, blah, blah, blah. It's a good idea to add some notes here to explain myself. So here I'm going to add a comment that says start template screen. What follows is the start of your template. But be careful, it is the template that went down on line 40 something. Mm -hmm. At the end of the of the template, I'll add a comment that says end template screen. So find the end of your section and then I'll say end template screen. If I do this for the template, it's a good idea to do this for my page one, which will be the home section. So where I just copied and pasted this whole section at the top, line 11, start home screen. Now obviously all of these comments are completely superfluous, unnecessary, but I would recommend you comment your code as much as you want to help yourself, especially if you're a beginner, coding. Make yourself a note that explains to yourself in your own words, what does this code do? What does it mean? 
or leave yourself a hint or leave yourself a message. So I personally do this a lot because when I deal with projects, they're hundreds of lines long. And it's very easy to lose track of what your code is, especially if you stop working today. You know, I had a very productive eight hour coding session today. Then when I come back next time, what did I do again? Oh, okay, I left myself notes so I can remind myself what I've done to continue. So if this starts our home screen, we've got a spot where it ends. And here's another uh, thing here, very useful with Notepad++. Remember, you can click at the start of a, of a tag, and if you wrote it properly, it should show you its pair. So here, zoomed out, I see that's one chunk, one screen full of content. If I click on the second section, it should encompass the other part. So once these get to be dozens of lines long, s something as simple as just clicking where's the starting tag to show me the ending tag can be very useful, especially for debugging. Where did I go wrong? So I'm trying to find the end of this section. Instead of kind of scrolling around, whoops, I missed it. Where did it go? You can click on the first section tag, follow the red line. There's the ending of it, where I can write end home screen. Yeah, the order doesn't matter, but I want it at the top because I want to leave template as the very last one. All right, so if we've got uh, a new section that's supposed to be about home, here now we can start to fill in the proper ID, headers, and all of that. So just to fill in some content here, um, we can, uh, so we have some content. Let's uh, make it like a little project about, um, did we already do this? Our favorite movies? Wasn't it favorite horror yeah. movies? Yeah. Was it horror movies or just favorite movies? Movie. Just movies. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll borrow that idea again. Uh, it's too early for me to think. <laughs> okay, well, I was up until two, okay? But um, let's, uh, let's make another uh, favorite movies thing or favorite whatever you want at all, any, any kind of thing. So we're gonna make multiple screens of uh, some of our content here. So the first thing, ID, home, for your start page, and uh, header right here, top five films. So the, top, the text that will appear at the top of the home screen, top five films. Let's say this is a site all about top five films, different kinds of top five films. So then in our nav bar, uh, home connects to home. The second one I had about, let's do, let's say we're going to have like a screen with like top five horror films, top five romance films, top five anime films, etc. So let's have another one of horror. And then whatever you want, another one here, let's say foreign. So my home section, my home screen will list top five films. Buttons at the top, our main content area, main heading. You can make it say something like welcome. That button that was there, I'm going to remove it completely. We'll add a paragraph. I'll say, um, welcome to the best website about the best movies in the world.
I took out the second. Um, I took out the. I took out the subheading H three. Um, so I could put an image. So the main article. Welcome text. Or the message paragraph. New paragraph. So I can put an image. We'll go online. We'll find a picture of like of a movie camera or a film canister or something, and we'll put it here. Then we will create screens for those two, and then create the top five content, and then like grab some pictures about those kinds of movies. So I want an image here. I'm going to borrow one from online. So go ahead and go online. Go go to your favorite search engine and, and search for like movie camera or like movie theater or something. We'll go find a picture related to movies and then place it into your source. Go online. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search. Let's say uh, movie camera. Find plenty of pictures of movie cameras. So whatever movie camera you find, and then you should be able to eventually track down the link usually you can right click it might work when you find your picture either right click your browser might say copy image address or copy image location something like that so I think I found a picture I right click it I mean uh, Chrome so right click copy image address. And that's what I can paste into my source. Five films, project, home, horror, foreign, welcome message, picture. Uh, mine ended up, my picture ended up uh, working pretty well with the size of my screen. If you've got a picture that's really big, we can add some quick styling. Usually you want to do this with, um, you know, some CSS in a separate CSS file. We'll do that later. But for the moment, we can add, if your picture's too big, we can add some very quick uh, style attribute so that that shrinks down a little bit so um, if you need to I added the image source you can add it before or after but I'll add it before just so that I can show it to you on the screen style equals with and then some value um, maybe like uh, 240 px the order in this case does not matter got the source to my image and I added the style attribute with property 240 value. That's a pretty good size uh, for a mobile device screen. I don't have to specify a height. It will automatically shrink itself in proportion. If I specify width or height, the other one will automatically set itself. There we go. case um, so I have my browser I shrunk it down nice and tall like a mobile device there's my image it's a good size it's no longer centered so we have the ability to center your element um, 
with again some quick CSS. We'll do this um, with with another attribute here. Um, probably a very quick way to do this is since there's more than one way to do the same thing. Let's back up to the paragraph. I've got a paragraph that is a parent container. Then I've got children elements in this case, just image, but I can have more. So parent element, child element. To the parent element, I will say, let's center what's inside of it. And it's not text, but text align center often works. And there's other ways to do it. We, we did a centering via margins. We did margin auto. That would probably work as well. This is just more than one way uh, to do this. Quick way. Paragraph, anything inside of it should be centered. Text, including images. Just get centered. Now, if you've got your screen browser maximized like that, you know, it's more of like a tablet sized. It's still centered. And I would need to deal with making more columns in my design. There is a way to make more columns via jQuery mobile. But for the moment, for testing this, I've got it as a tall, thin web browser just like if, if this was a tall, thin mobile device. So here's my home screen, looks good. I want to create a new screen for horror, and then I'll introduce a brand new jQuery mobile element for design. Okay, we need a horror screen, or whatever genres you like here. I need a horror screen, well, I need to reuse my template. My template has all the pieces I need header and all of that. Um, so let's copy. I'm going to start from the comment, start template screen, because I can just change the comment. But copy that whole chunk that was your, 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 your template. So copy that chunk, that section of template that was that, paste it, so now this is start of horror screen, end horror screen. Oh, one thing we're forgetting on the home screen, uh, the footer, it simply says footer. Uh, let's put a copyright notice down there. Right, copyright symbol 2017. Let me just back up a quick moment. Uh, copyright symbol for the home screen. And then on the horror screen, we'll fill in a few things. <clears throat> okay, the horror screen. Uh, let's see. First of all, ID. We should change that right away. Horror. My header, I'm going to write uh, top five horror. And then we've got this bit of a problem. Page one, page two, page three. I have to change this and this and this. And this. Is there a smarter way to do it? Instead of going to each one of these and changing them? Is there a copy and, paste. copy and paste? Yes. From my home, I have what I need. Home horror for it. Home horror for it. So back up to your home section and just copy the three list items. Is it still UL? It's still nav. These change. Copy lines 22 to 24 in my case. Copy the three lines of the nav and then paste them right on top of the ones that I needed to change.
those are already set. If I set them properly, I've already got home, horror, and foreign. Therefore, I will replace, I'll replace these generic ones from my template. Maybe I could set that in my template so that in the future copies and pastes, I've already got that. That may or may not be the right thing to do. You, this is one of the things that you will figure out depending on your project. But uh, I'll do it again here. So I'll paste that already has all of that. And speaking of which, uh, we're forgetting about the icon, aren't we? Does the icon of a of an info look good for harbor? Um, that'll be okay. Later I'll show you also a way to, let's say we had all four of our pages, three of our pages, and I don't want that icon anymore. There is a way to replace code, a lot of code at once, a little later. These icons don't quite fit. We can still fix them later. If you check it, home screen, welcome. Clicking on horror should say the you know, generic stuff, which we'll fill in in a moment. Clicking back to page one should take you back to home. Okay, so in the actual article, in the main content, in the horror section, up at the top, Something like what goes bunk in the night. We don't need that button anymore. In this case, I'm going to remove. Let's remove the H3 and the paragraph. We're going to introduce a brand new element here. We have a way to create these cool, like dividers, like sort of like tabs. I want to list the top five films in a visually interesting way. We have another element. This is a list view element. This is a collection of items in a certain view, a list of items with a certain view. The way we'll do this is we've been you've been kind of just following along and I've been feeding you the information of jQuery Mobile. Well, between yesterday and today. Did anyone venture to go over to jQueryMobile.com? Daniel, you did great. 10 points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. <laughs> you should be thinking outside the box a little bit. Let's do that right now. Let's go to your web browser, open a new window, and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. I've been giving you the, the, the code that I think this looks good at the moment. But here, this is the documentation. This is officially where you go to learn every nuance of jQueryMobile.com. Uh, here's also where you would donate. It is a free project, but donations are welcome. Even like $2. A cup of coffee is nice. The way we will use the site is, at the top, we have demos and API documentation. Usually you'll look inside of the demos section. The API documentation is more of like for the hardcore programmers that need the most complex aspects of jQuery Mobile. We will go to the demos. Click on demos at the top. There are different versions of jQuery Mobile. Which one are we using? That's right, we're using the latest one. So click on latest stable version, 145. Then this jQuery uh, manual loads up, jQuery mobile manual. This jQuery mobile manual is designed in jQuery mobile itself. So they, they practice what they preach. They use their own project on their own website. This has two names. Does anyone know in the industry, in, in the tech world, what do you call it when you use your own product? Anyone heard of that? Sometimes it's called eating your own dog food, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, I'm a dog food company and we feed our dogs our own dog food. 
we eat our own dog food. Okay. I've also heard it as drinking your own champagne. You know, we make Hold our own yourself. champagne. We drink it ourselves. What's that? Hold yourself. Say that again. Hold yourself. Full of yourself. Uh, hmm, never heard of it like that. <laughs> could could work that way, yeah. So this so here jQueryMobile.com is eating their own dog food or drinking their own champagne. They made jQuery Mobile and their website is made in jQuery Mobile. That's what I'm getting at. So there's a way to make these cool boxes in a cool grid. Oh look, grid. There's a cool way to make a side nav bar and pop-ups. There's the pop-up widget. So this is the manual that explains how to make a nav bar, which we already made, and we can find even more details on how to customize it. So this is the full manual on all of the details. Yes? So I really like how Apple makes it website when you like scroll down, there's like images going down and you can see the full image. Like, how, how would that be in transitions? Yes, uh, most likely a transition because Apple does that in a lot of websites nowadays too, that as you're scrolling, things fade in and they move. That has to do with some transitions, but most likely also a lot of custom code. When you're a, a company like Apple, one of the richest companies in the world, you can afford to hire a lot of professional developers to make code that is only that only you have. But we can do a version with the frameworks here. So I said earlier I want to create a brand new element called list view. Scroll down here under widgets and let's go read the list view documentation. List view. A list view is coded as a simple unordered list or ordered list with a data role of list view attribute and has a wide range of features. So here's an example, a read only unordered one. It's a list of cars. And the way the documentation works is it shows you the example and you can view source right below it. And here's the HTML, unordered list data role, list view, just a bunch of list items. Here's one with numbers. Here's one with links. So let's say we're doing our horror movies. So we have the first horror movie and then a button to view more. How does that work? It's simply some unordered list with a data role and some href. That's easy. Inset. Notice the difference. Inset true, inset false. Inset false is that your elements go all the way to the edge of the screen. Inset true, they end and have a rounded edge. The way that works, view source, UL, data role, list view, data inset true. Now this code that's here, if you, if you double click any of that, it, it opens up so you can actually copy it. We'll do that in a moment. Filter, this is a really cool one. Uh, you can set up a way that it has a bunch of items visible and then a built-in search for it to filter itself. For example, I have a, a fruit here with, with the letter C. So as I start typing C, everything that's not a C disappears. And then as I start to go CH, it stays with only cherry. And the source on that, data role list view, data filter true, data filter placeholder. What's the text that appears in the search box? Data inset true. So again, to do that originally with custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is a lot of work. And here, by just activating data filter true, it's done. The ability to, cl to clear the text, you know, start to search something. There's the opposite, filter reveal. There's a search. The person starts searching. You know, C and everything with C's reveals, CH. This is very similar. Um, this one has. This one searches as you go. Now, this is. The ones that we see most often on bigger websites are tied into a database to pull the information that we're searching for dynamically. 
this one has to you have to fill in all of your elements first. They're just not going to be visible until the filter starts to kick in. So I still have to have a list of all 20 of my items, program it the right way, and then it will find what I need. And notice this one's more complex. It needs a form element. Remember when we talked about forms a while ago? A form element with a class attribute, then an input field with an ID and a data type. That's a data type, not a data role. Placeholder, not data placeholder, placeholder. Then the unordered list, data role list view, data filter true, data filter reveal true, data input, autocomplete input. So this one's much more complex, but not so complex that you, that you, that you don't get it. I think if you look at the code, it makes sense. The unordered list is tied to autocomplete input ID. This has an autocomplete input ID, so this is tied to this. These items are hidden. They will be revealed based on what you type up here, what you search. List dividers. Here's another one. This is the one we're going to do. We can do a bunch of these if we want, but this is the one I want to do at the moment. I want to have um, these, these header dividers with areas here. Um, and these can then be links or not. What else? Auto dividers will automatically generate dividers. OK, that one's cool. It'll automatically see your letters and make dividers count bubbles, so if I want to add uh, text that appears for emails, inboxes, icons, I can even do thumbnails. Okay, so we'll do the one uh, to start off with, list dividers. Checking our code, we need an unordered list, data role, list view, data inset true. We haven't talked about theme yet, so we're going to skip it. And then list items, data role. So one quick way to do this is, let's just borrow this code, then we'll change it. We can type it all ourselves, sure. But let's go to the list dividers section. View source, double click, copy all of that, and then we'll change this for some horror movie uh, content. All right, so the article in the horror section, I'm going to paste in. It might be lined up all weird, so remember you can select what you've pasted, press tab, and all of that will tab together. So this is like a website all about top lists. And I'm in the section of horror. So one way that I can further divide my content, let's say uh, I'm going to have like the top five horror movies from the 2000s, from the 90s, from the 80s. So that's why I have a, a divider. So it's an unordered list, data will list view, data inset true, data divider. Let's delete this for the moment. Data divider theme A attribute, just delete this whole attribute. I haven't talked about themes yet. Change your code there, no, no data theme yet. So we're going to have, well, actually, we're in the 2010s, aren't we? So 2010s, the other divider here, 2000s. So let's say top, top movies. Uh, let's see, one more thing. I'm going to use numbers. We had numbers. I think that's just an OL. Yep, that's just an OL. 
So actually, we also want these to be numbered, OL instead of UL. It's going to be top five. Obviously, the best movie of, of the 2010s so far is Get Out. What other mo horror movies from the 2010s should you vote? Should we? Should we split? Vote? Split. Conjuring. Split. The Conjuring. What other good horror movies did you guys see? Uh, what, was, what about that one? Everyone said it was good. Witches with a Y. Blue Blair Witch. Oh, yeah. Blue Blair Witch. And we have to count the new Evil Dead as well. So there's a few. Put away whichever ones you want, of course. And it goes from one to five. First best to fifth best from the 2010s. So to test it, you can then open it in the browser. I'm in the home screen. I'll click on horror. I go to horror. Got my text at the top there. a little off actually OL data roll data insert true list items Say that again. It uh, we never affected line height anywhere in CSS. It should automatically look like the original because we never wrote any more beyond that. So that's kind of odd. It's supposed to look simply like like this supposed to look like that but what's missing maybe we do we took out that data we took out that data theme maybe it does need it maybe I'm thinking of something else let me put back that data theme a doing it so there's some amount of weird space that's not supposed to be there um, let's see we got list items list items all of these are correct Yours looks fine? Yeah. Okay, let me check it. 
and check it in Firefox. Hmm. Firefox is still off for me. I'm on Firefox. I'm going to take a quick look at your code. I just did a copy and paste, so there should be nothing special unless I'm missing something. Can you see that? Assume copying and pasting directly from the That's site. Yeah, exactly. Copying and pasting should work. Um, it might be something else somewhere else, like okay, article is spelled right, H2, opening and closing, OL, opening and closing, list item. Yeah, and that was all just copied and pasted. Quick thing. Where are those extra tabs? There isn't, it isn't showing an extra tab where it's less than There's a space Because if I look, if, I, if we turn on, oh, okay. you know, show all characters, kind of like Microsoft Word, if you turn on that icon right it, there, show all characters. I think I spotted it. It's because we copied and pasted. Mm -hmm. Some of the spaces in that in there aren't tabs, it's spaces. Oh, okay. So is it the spaces right right here? Yeah. Oh yeah, I corrected the spaces and the space tabs. Yeah, the ones that were messing up for me were those. Huh. Okay. So I turned on that P special character like word, it'll show you right here. Uh, character line, line feed, character return line feed. So this is where you press enter. This is where I press tabs. There seem to be a bunch of spaces where they press space instead of tab. So from the code of jQuery Mobile. So I guess try removing the space before each one of these. Turn on the special view and then change those. I guess uh, depending how you copied it from from jQuery Mobile, if you did view source and did double click, that's what I did. I copied it there. But you could have also view source and selected that and copied it. So give that a try. Remove, if you see a bunch of that empty space before each one, remove it. And that's it. So weird. So spaces. Again, spaces are not nothing. Spaces, even spaces, are something. And I guess jQuery Mobile got confused by having all of those spaces. So I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have 
thought about that, but there we go, a room full of uh, debuggers. So I turned on that option to see all of these special characters, and there you see something's different. So there you go, that's what it should look like. Now these are set up for, for links. These could possibly go to to a link where there's more info about each one. I won't do that just yet. We could go deeper and go have a whole page full of each one of these. Um, right now, the ordered list goes from one to five. So number one best, fifth best. We can reverse the order of the lists as well. This is one that I have to remind myself. So, have you been searching for you know extra stuff beyond class? For example, how to reverse um, OL HTML. There's a way to reverse the numbers. Re reverse the numbers. The default is that the numbers go from one to X. I want to start from X and go back to one. So there is a way to reverse the OL tag. And uh, seems like you simply add reversed attribute, and that will reverse it. If you wanted it to go the opposite way, you've got your OL, data role, data inset. Anywhere you add it there, I can add it at the end, reversed. Reversed. And didn't do it. Okay. Well, maybe because we've got the um, the other elements of jQuery Mobile, So reversed, reversed. I spelled it right, didn't I? Reversed. Uh, mine didn't reverse. Did yours reverse? Okay. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it just yet. Then there's other ways to reverse it. If it didn't reverse right away, that's all right. We have a few other things to look at first. Okay, well, if it reversed, good. If it didn't, that's that's okay. Um, then I could figure out uh, movies for the 2000s. We can do that later. Um, let's say we want to create a... Um oh, one more thing here in the footer. We've got footer. We've got a spot for the footer. Um, whatever we want in the footer, like another copyright notice or something else. 
um, or nothing. Let's say I do want a footer area, but nothing in there. If you put in, I believe we've mentioned this one, here's how you make that empty space. NBSP, non-breaking space. There's a special character to force there to be an empty space in the H4 in the footer. And we're going to move on to the um, to a new page, the foreign screen, and we have another element that I want to look at, a collapsible element. We'll see the difference in a moment. But uh, we've got home, we've got horror, we've got some horror movies listed. These could be linked to go further. Uh, we've got a footer area with nothing in it. If we wanted, we could put something in it. Now we'll do foreign. So we need a section for foreign. I'm going to copy my template start to set up some content for foreign movies, and then I have a brand new one that will look at collapsible. I'm going to copy the template screen. I'm going to paste temp the, new the copy of template right below horror. Start foreign screen. End foreign screen. ID foreign. And then I need to copy the nav from any previous section. They're all the same now, either home or horror. I need to copy those, those same elements. Heading will be top five foreign. My footer, I'm going to do the same thing, keep that blank. The article, delete all of that. And then we'll do a collapsible in a moment. So set up your foreign screen a little bit. And then we'll look at a brand new widget, a brand new jQuery mobile widget called Collapsible. Now if I go from home to foreign, I've got a foreign screen to work with, horror screen. Okay, top five foreign, or international films. So, um, the way this one will work, if you go back to the jQuery documentation, jQuery mobile documentation, collapsible set. So back under widgets, we've got collapsible set. This is going to be, um, it'll show the top five films. You click and then itself it opens up. It's like a drawer that will open up. Collapsible set. The basic example, section one, section two. You click on that, it opens up and there's stuff inside of it. There's the inset and then there's the, the non-inset version. It's a mini version. You can change your icons if you want. Position the icon. Square corners, round corners. Change the design a little bit. All right, so looking at the very first example, view source, it's set up with a div, data role, collapsible set, data theme, which we don't need, data content theme, which we don't need, then div, data role, collapsible. So again, here we'll copy this, but we might have to fix some of these empty spaces.
Okay, so I'm going to copy that, and inside of the top foreign section, I'm going to paste that in. This is a div. It's a generic container div. Data role, collapsible set. Don't worry about data theme and data content theme yet. Div data role collapsible. There's a heading inside of it. And again, probably because of a bunch of empty spaces. Yeah, it's going to look a little weird. You'll, you'll need to remove a bunch of empty spaces here. Here's one way to do this. This is kind of an advanced way in the keyboard. There's a bunch of empty spaces before the this element, right? One way to quickly select all of that, this is a, an advanced keyboard shortcut, Control shift left arrow selects that piece or control shift right arrow see what I'm doing if my if my cursor is there I need to delete all of this stuff here so if my cursor is here and I press delete a lot okay I get it eventually but if I if I'm here and I hold shift control and then right arrow it jumps and selects all of that empty spot where I can delete if my cursor's on the right side, I can backspace a bunch of times, or I can hold Shift, Control, and then Left. So the Control arrow keys jump me from word to word. Holding Control left and right, I go from word to word. It technically counts all of that empty space as one word. So Control left would just jump across it. Holding shift by itself and the arrow keys lets me select one character at a time. So if I start my cursor here, shift left lets me select characters at a time. Combining control shift lets me jump across a whole word to select. Control shift right and I'm jumping across and selecting words. I do this often. When you see me selecting stuff, I often use the arrow keys instead of the mouse. So for example, here, shift left, control shift left, then delete. Control shift right, delete. Control shift right, delete. It's still a lot of little effort. It's going to be much faster than backspacing 50 times or pressing delete. Control shift arrows. foreign films. Number one. Um, what was that great one? Uh, Hero. And um, number two. The Seven Samurai. Have any opinions on some good foreign films? Leon. Yeah, Leon. Um, let's see. Kung Fu Hustle, yeah. Which one? Army, all right. So 
So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. I guess we went up to number six or whatever. So yeah, add some items. Here I am manually uh, writing the numbers. And then to add the, the next ones, you see you have an H3. You have an H3 to create the different um, headings. also have it's kind of it's a lot to look at but based on the original based on the original code and it does help to tab this a little bit so I, I will tab these things tab they had those weird spaces but it looks better like this So I tap them again instead of pressing space. I'm going to do a data roll collapsible set for the whole thing. Then each collapsible button is wrapped around a div data roll collapsible. Inside, then it's got a heading and then the content. You need to copy those divs, those inner divs, there inside of the whole collapsible set. Make sure you copy also the starting and ending collapsible. All right, so we can fill in those details. Um, that's any kind of content, any kind of text, any kind of picture, even a video. You know, we can go over and get the, um, the trailers from YouTube and put it in. As long as it's inside of the div, whatever content will, will exist there. But I think for the moment, we'll, we'll, we'll stop the lecture at this point. There's still more jQuery stuff I want to learn uh, and uh, talk about uh, colors, changing design and stuff like that. Uh, we, you see here that very quickly we have a project that we can put together. 
although everyone's looks the same it's all gray and white I want to change it to you know yellow and blue and change fonts and all of that we'll cover that next time so there's no homework yet we have still got a little bit more we'll cover with jQuery mobile I'll put my version of the code in the folder when we come back on the next lecture on uh, Monday we'll continue using jQuery mobile tomorrow will simply be a lab time in case you need it but the next lecture will be on Monday. Any questions so far on what we've looked at with jQuery Mobile? All right, so I'm going to save my work. I'll put it in the folder, and I will do a little bit of lab time if you need it. We'll do a little bit of it when we cover a little bit of, of JavaScript. We need JavaScript, exactly. We need JavaScript in order to do that. And that's a little bit what we'll do a little later.